Hi, my name is Rune Eschenhagen and I'm presenting the paper Laplace Redux Effortless Bayesian Deep Learning. This is joint work with Eric Daxberger, Agostinus Christiadi, Alexander Immer, Matthias Bauer and Philipp Hennig. So the Laplace approximation is a very simple method in Bayesian Deep Learning, which has been recently somewhat neglected. It's useful for uncertainty calibration, for model selection and online learning. And also it's very competitive compared to other Bayesian deep learning methods. In this paper, we propose a PyTorch-based library for Laplace approximations. Moreover, we also review the state of the art of modern Laplace approximations and show that they perform competitively. To provide a bit more context, what is Bayesian deep learning actually useful for? There are multiple applications where it can be useful. The first one is predictive uncertainties. This is especially important for out of distribution detection and under distribution shift, where it can help avoid overconfident predictions. Another application is model selection and without any validation data. This can be used to select hyperparameters or even the whole neural network architecture. And finally, it can also be used for online learning um, especially for continued learning and active learning. So the standard deep learning setup is that we have a neural network F parameterized by theta and an IID dataset with data points XI and labels y YI. Typically we want to find the maximum a posteriori estimate by maximizing the log joint distribution. In deep learning, the loss function corresponds to the negative log likelihood and the regularizer corresponds to the log prior. However, from the Bayesian perspective, the estimate theta map is just the mode of the posterior and completely ignores the uncertainty around it. This can be seen in figure A, where the, the map predictive has very high confidence far away from the training data, whereas in figure B, you can see that the Bayesian predictive has low confidence far away from the training data and only high confidence around the training data. And this is the desired behavior. I've already said that the Laplace approximation is very simple and it can actually be described in three steps. So first, we need the map estimate that I've just explained. Um, we can use a pre-trained network for that or just train network ourselves by, the, by using the regular deep learning techniques. Then we want to construct a local approximation around that estimate theta map. We use theta map as the mean of a Gaussian distribution and take the negative inverse Hessian of the loss as the covariance matrix. This forms the approximate posterior Q of theta. This local approximation can be derived by a second order Taylor approximation of the log joint distribution. Finally, we can use this approximate posterior to make a prediction. And with this, we automatically receive um, predictive uncertainty. So despite being so simple, usually in Bayesian deep learning, other methods are used. For example, variational methods, sampling methods, or some heuristic. And in most common frameworks for deep learning, the Laplace approximation is not even implemented. Also, other methods typically require um, Different, different training procedures. So why, why is the Laplace approximation overlooked? We can only speculate, but some, some reasons might be that it's simply old and not trendy or novel enough, and there's nothing we can do about that. Or another reason might be that people think they need more complex or expressive um, models and approximations to achieve competitive performance. But also we, we will see, and we also show this in the paper, that this is not true. And then finally, maybe people think it's simply not practical due to the expensive computation of the Hessian. But even this is not really true anymore because there have been recent advances in Hessian approximations such as KFAC and also the corresponding libraries to compute these quantities such as Backpack or ASDL, which are both libraries that we use in the backend of our library. So our library is called Laplace and you can simply install it via pip install Laplace Torch. 
And you can see here is also the signature of Laplace himself. So apparently he also approves of our library. And um, the main goal of the library is to make Laplace approximations accessible in deep learning. And more specifically, we want to enable practitioners to get an easily started with Bayesian deep learning. And we want to provide a strong baseline for Bayesian deep learning researchers and also enable new methods. On the, on the, in the figure, you can see um, how easy it is to apply the library. It only takes a few lines of code and you get your um, Bayesian deep learning method. We've seen that it's very easy to apply the library, but you also have the choice to apply and explore the design space of modern Laplace approximations. So I'll guide you step by step through the possible design, design decisions. The first step is you have your deterministic network, F theta. And then the first choice you have to make is which weights should actually be treated probabilistically. And there you can just use all weights, a subnetwork of weights, or only the last layer. And the corresponding keyword in the Laplace interface is um, subset of weights. The next choice you have to make is the structure of the Hessian approximation. And again, you have the choice of the full Hessian up to the diagonal Hessian. And the corresponding keyword in the Laplace interface is Hessian structure. In the next step, there are two possibilities. The first is that you don't have a pre-trained network. Then you can optimize the hyperparameters during training by optimizing the marginal likelihood. If you've already trained a neural network, you can simply use that and optimize the hyperparameters post hoc, also via the marginal likelihood or simply using cross-validation. Finally, we just want to choose a predictive approximation since, at least for the classification case, no exact closed form solution is available. And there we can use a Monte Carlo approximation or a closed form approximation such as the Probit approximation. Now that you've seen options that are available in the library, I want to go through some brief examples of how it can be applied in practice. The first one is a simple regression task. Here the model is very small, so we can choose all weights and we can also use the full Hessian approximation. Then just adding a few lines of code, we get the predictive variance returned as well, which you can see in the figure. Another very common, very common benchmark is image classification. And here, because typically large models are used, we use a lightweight variation of the Laplace approximation, namely a last layer approximation with a KFAC structured Hessian. Due to, the, due to these design choices, the overhead over the map training and prediction is very small, especially compared to the other Bayesian deep learning methods shown here. Despite this um, little overhead, we can show that the expected calibration error is comparable to the other methods while retraining its accuracy. A different setting is Bayesian neural model selection, where we want to optimize the hyperparameters during training. This is enabled by the library by providing a differentiable marginal likelihood approximation, which can be optimized during training. After training, you can see in the figure that the marginal likelihood actually strongly correlates with the test accuracy. Finally, online learning, and in particular continual learning, this is a task where you want to train on multiple tasks sequentially without revisiting the data of previous tasks and retain performance across all tasks. Here, it's very easy to do this with the Laplace approximation because our library can take a prior mean and prior precision as parameters and you can simply choose the posterior covariance and posterior mean as the prior for the next task. You can see in the figure that especially if you're using a structured approximation such as KFAC, the performance stays almost the same across tasks. Now that you've seen some high-level examples of how you can apply the library, I want to say a few words about under, under the hood of the library. So first some limitations. The library is not completely plug and play, at least not always, because it requires the, the practitioner to make some design choices and choose the appropriate Laplace approximation for the specific problem. However, for many common problems, 
the defaults are a good choice. Also, the library doesn't support all kinds of neural network architectures, and this is simply due to the fact that we depend on other libraries to compute the second order quantities. Finally, currently we only implement a Gaussian likelihood for regression and a categorical likelihood for classification and also Gaussian priors. However, all these limitations are not fundamental and the library can be easily extended because we've written it in a modular way. So it's, it's simple to add additional Hessian approximations, likelihoods or priors. In case you're interested, we are very happy to receive contributions. Okay, so we have seen that the Laplace approximation is an efficient and lightweight variation of Bayesian deep learning, which has been somewhat neglected recently. We hope that our library Laplace enables practitioners and researchers alike to use Laplace approximations in deep learning, and we hope that this makes the Laplace approximation more accessible. So give it a try. Thank you for your attention.